Oh, hello, fellas. Well, this uh, on the lathe here, that's a tool handle I just made. Norm, and the only reason I'm really showing how to make tool handles is that, uh, Randy, get out of here, is that I do things a little different than most people, as you will see. Uh, the only thing now, i got to saw it off and, and stick a tool in it, and it's done. It's got all the cedar on it. And you'll see how come it's got the color and, you know, the way I do it is, is different. Anyway, one thing I want to ask, uh, if any, anybody can help me out, is uh, this, this tool here, my beaver. I'm sure all you, my subscribers are familiar with it. Well, I decided I'm going to I'm going to uh, make them and sell them. I'm not going to make them myself. I've been looking for somebody to make them for me. And it seems like all of these companies I've contacted and sent drawings, they don't want to mess with anything other than about 10,000. Well, I mean, you know, there ain't 10,000 wood turners and around here, and I doubt everybody will buy one. Uh, I mean, I wanted to, to get like 50 made to see how they sell, and then we'll go from there. If they don't sell, well, then, you know, I'll give them away or something, but I don't want to put a whole lot of money in it. So if anybody knows, you know, somebody's small machine shop, it'll probably take a CNC. I have the right kind of drawings made already, and I have a prototype uh, and pictures of it. So I'll be happy to send those to anybody, and they can give me a quote. Because I really, I really think a lot of guys would like this tool if they start using it. So anyway, getting on with that, let me show you how I did this handle. So I'll make a handle for my new round cutter, which I haven't built yet. Here's all the stuff I'm going to use to make it. I'm going to make it my way. And I think I do it different than most people, but maybe not. There's probably 40 or 50 YouTube videos out there on how to make handles. <clears throat> so I'm sure I didn't invent the first way. Anyway, I got a piece of wood here. I have no idea what it is. Not even going to try to guess. I mean, something, you know, I just, I just gather up wood and I'll put it, you know, in there and a uh, year later I go to use it. So unless I write on it, don't expect me to remember what it was. Anyway, here it is and it's going to be, time I wheeler bend this crooked end off there and a tenon on this end, probably 14, 15 inches. Just a piece of uh, one, one inch copper pipe and I've already cleaned that off a little bit. That's going to be my ferrule. My tool, this is 5, five eighths uh, zinc covered, zinc coated, I guess, uh, steel pipe, steel tubing, rod, steel rod, there you go. Uh, that's going to be what my cutting tool res resides on. So the first thing is go to bandsaw and get these two ends squared up. So I'll meet you over there. Hey, you may ask why I'm even show, bothering to show this, but and, you know, there's a couple of reasons. All of us watching this aren't seasoned uh, turners or wood people. But anyway, uh, this is a very aggressive bandsaw. It's a grizzly. 17-inch, uh, I believe. But I've got a 2TPI blade on here. What that means is that it is a very aggressive blade. It can jerk something out of your hand in a heartbeat. So there's two ways, to, if you're cutting something around, that's the most danger. There's two ways to do this, right there. Now you, if you've got an aggressive bandsaw and plenty of stuff to hold on to, you can just, you can come in here real slow, it'll work fine. Uh, the way I generally do it, you know, I thought about doing it that way, but you know, it's, it's when you get complacent, I think you know more than this other stuff does is when you get hurt. So, okay, I'm going to be using this hand, so I'm going to come more like this because I want to get them as about as square as I can. So I'm going to cut this off. Let's see if it fits good. And uh, then we'll flip around and square the other end off the best we can. So I put wedges in and like this. I didn't want to do it like that. Let's try this to keep me from out of work. I still have one wedge. Okay. Uh, what was I saying? I don't know. Let's get going. Before I put the stick on the lathe, I'm going to use a bigger one here. Okay. 
for I put the stick in place, uh, I like to do what I call uh, putting it in jail. And what that means is that when I get done with this and get it on the lace, it's basically in jail. When I put somebody in jail, I try to fix it where they don't come out. So here's how the way I do it in case I got some new viewers. I come in to one end, it doesn't really matter. In this case, I'm going to use a bigger end because so I'm going to make, it, make sure I got plenty of room for a tenant. And I would have me a one inch. That's close. That's called a I'm guessing is called a swag. Scientific wild ass guess. What did I do with it now? There it is. Come down here about all half the depth of this. If it's sharp enough, to it. All right, that's about what I do about the size of that right there. first started turning, I had a few of them go flying on me. I saw somebody do this, is certainly not my Alright, that's that. Wooden mallet this time, this is a brand new one. regular old line center on the tailstock and we're gonna come in here and we're putting it in jail my friends <clears throat> so there we are and unlock it turn it on make sure I always take it and grip it here and grip the handle wheel to see if I got a you know it moves all right, I'm all dressed up for the dance here. Because I have this thing in jail, I can spin it a whole lot faster than I would if it was just you know, pressed on both ends. So I've got the slow belt on. It spins up to a thousand RPM. So I'm gonna spin it just as fast as it'll go. There you go. I'm going to use a uh, square cutter with a radius. Try to do this left handed so you guys can see. I don't have a problem using left handed. Here's another pet peeve of mine. I bought these jaws as a Nova. It said dovetail jaws, and they are dovetail on the outside, but the inside it is not. The smaller jaws. It's got a little old bitty lip back here, but other than that, they're straight. 
so they're not as secure. It's got a little lip, so what you need to do is come in here, and I use a quarter inch gouge, and you just want to make you a little place right there uh, for that to sit in. Okay, all it, to, all it is to it, my friends. All right, I'm getting ready. Well, I have it in the chuck, but I'm getting ready to tighten it up. Here's your, a little piece of advice, whether you want it or not. When you put them in a chuck, you should always use the live center and tighten it up real good before you tighten this down. And it's not righty and tighty, lefty loosey. It's backwards. So. Now, I like to put the torque on it, especially on a tenon especially, because I, this tenon I especially don't trust because I don't like the jaws. I'm definitely into those tails inside now. And the next step is to cut this down for my ferrule to fit on. That's a one inch on the outside. So I'm going to set this for one inches, and that ought to be the outside of it. And it's not. Never have figured out how they measure things in this plumbing world. So I'm going to set this for the outside. Now there's now there's a method to my madness here, so bear with me, okay? And there's your ferrule all cut off and ready to go. I'll never do that again. I do not want it to fit on there. That's just right. All right, I can drive it on, but I'm going to show you another little trick. Take your propane torch. Get it. The next step is going to be to drill the hole. All right, the hole's drilled. Doing it this way, you assure yourself that it's going to be centered and uh, you know not going to be crooked. All right, let's see what we got. Oh. Probably help for brought this up more than tight and we're ready to whirl it. Make sure you don't hit. It's got to be out of place right there. Whatever that is, I don't know what it is, but it's one.
Yeah, I don't like a big handle. Big hands, big handle. I think I'm going to take it down a little bit more, though. I'm going to leave this straight and take her down to there. I don't see much need to put all them curves in it. Sanding already, which is done. Tool handles on. to me are not a piece of art, so I don't do much uh, sanding on them. It looks good. I'm going to shear cut this down. A uh, little sanding, and then I think I'm going to stain it something. I don't like light colors. Sandpaper will take care of that. I'm going to go here and make this a little smaller. For that, I'm going to use a point tool. Or, let's see, what do they call that thing? A fine finishing tool or something like that? I always use a point, call it a point tool. I'm going to come here and just make that a little smaller, no big deal. Friends, they'll sand it and stain it and seal it. There we go. See, then it requires the gloves to be off. Got a piece of 80 and got a piece of 320. There ought to be plenty. I like to sand fast. I know people say you shouldn't, but I do. It works fine. And a thousand RPM. Bring the air down here. And 
this, I'm going to do something different. I am going to use black shoe polish. I've done brown several times, but I've never done any black before. You see, too late now, right? Yeah, that took care of that real quick. My goodness. Might be a little darker than what I wanted. Show them our gloves. Now, no, it's sure where it goes. Sometimes I'm my worst enemy. Oh, well. I guess that's what they make soap and water for. Yeah, this is steel wool, double lot. I'm just going to. I'm just trying things, guys. a while and just other than cutting it off and putting the tool in this puppy will be done. And this is probably all I'm gonna do. steel wool and cut it off and it'll be done. Just that simple. Well, you know what I mean. If you leave this dry in clumps, it will dry in clumps, and you gotta sand them down. So you always have to wipe it down when you get done. That ought to work. Alright, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to mess with making a tool now. I may not make it for several days. I just want to show you guys how I make handles. I think it's uh, all been an hour and a half, but, you know, a lot of messing around and stuff. Look at my fingers now. Wow. All right. Subscribe. Tell your friends, subscribe. Call your mama. Have a good day. I'll catch you later. Keep them working. Bye.